What's going on YouTube? Clayky's all back again with another Final Fantasy Brave Exodus video, and that's right, I'm back from my Disney trip. I kind of already want to go back, but we have the Final Fantasy VI Brothers getting their 5-star base form. We finally figure out what those summon coins are all about, and we also have a band wave that maybe affected some of you guys, so we want to go over that as well. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so like I said, we're getting started. We have a couple of things, not too much crazy stuff going on this week, but we do get King Edgar of Figaro and Monk Sabin of Colts. That's right, we get the two Figaro bros coming in, five-star bases, much more powerful than their other uh, predecessors were. And then we get Setzer and Celeste on the banner as well. This is a King Mog event, and these units will give you a bonus. So with the Setzers and Celeste, they're going to be able to help you out quite a bit in this King Mog. Uh, moving on down, we do see a step up going on here, and this seems like our normal step up, nothing too crazy here. Uh, four per player, you can go all the way to the end. Um, it does look like they're adding more and more to these step ups to entice you guys to pull. Uh, at the end, you guys are guaranteed either an Edgar or a Sabin. Or Sabin, however you want to say it. Uh, and then you can also see we have some of the summon coins popping up here that you guys can get a hold of. Um, and we'll go over that later. There is some news here in a minute that talks about that. Uh, but overall, just general, you guys get the, uh, you need four of those five-star tickets in order to do like a 20 or 30% pull. I think it's back to 30% now of getting on banner. And then we get, you know, the 9 plus 2, 8 plus 3. Etc. Etc. Normal stuff. So, looking down at King Edgar of Figaro. First off, these sprites are beautiful. They are so beautiful. Um, when we talk about Edgar and we talk about uh, Sabin, they are both going to be damage dealers, uh, as you can see here with the uh, type. Uh, so, uh, Edgar can do a little bit of uh, debuffing. Overall, though, I will talk about these units. I do believe they are highly skippable. Um, unless you really want those TMRs or STMRs when it comes to damage dealers or breakers or debuffers, any of that in the future, or you love Final Fantasy VI. Uh, these units did not get any global buffs, which was really sad. Um, so, th they're not bad. They're very strong, but there are going to be other units you're going to want to spend your, uh, you know, your lapis on. You can spend a few tickets. You can, maybe you love Final Fantasy VI and you want to go on these banners, but other than that, they're really cool. You can spend some tickets, hopefully get lucky, but they're nothing to go crazy like it was with Xeno, Axstar, and then soon to be Regina, things like that. Uh, moving on down, let's look at the Super Trust Mastery Reward, which is kind of ridiculous. Coin of Fate Edgar. It's an accessory attack 50. Gives you nullification to all of these stats, which is going to be very important moving into the future. Because not only are you going to need something like this ribbon type effect, you are going to need to also buff up your resist to these status elements. Because monsters are going to be able to start imperiling your resistance to these. So like, let's say you have 100%. Well, they can, the monster can imperil by 100%, and then you're going to get paralyzed anyway, even if you have this ribbon or this coin of fate on, you know what I mean? So you're going to need this plus a buffer against that resist to be able to make it through. Uh, this also gives you LB fill rate up. So amazing. It's giving you a 50 attack, which a lot of us true dual wielders, uh, true double handers want. We're getting all the status elements resistance down, and we get LB fill rate ridiculous STMR. Uh, looking at the Trust Master reward, Master of Machinery, which in global, it's like, we have so many machine killers, uh, but, but it's cool because it's uh, kind of playing off of you know, his other form. Boost MP by 20% and attack by 40% and boost physical damage against Machina monsters and machine monsters. So a much better machine killer for you guys out there if you end up getting this 5 star base. Um, we'll go over all these abilities in a banner review later this week. Um, but again, it's not too scary because there's no global buffs, so we're going to know what they do. If you guys want to learn more about that, you can always check out, uh, I think it's called, uh, X, uh, you can go to the wiki or there are other sites where you can go up and look up their Japanese counterparts. They're also on the Reddit. If you type in Google FFBE Reddit, uh, units, that'll bring you up to a unit page. You can control F, look through all those. You can find them, find out what they do. If you'd like to know a little bit ahead of time before they get put on the wiki. And then Monk of Sabin of Colts. I, I mean, I love Sabin more than Edgar and I want him. The problem is his LB isn't him suplexing a train on top of someone. While it's still really good, strong, powerful, and uh, cool to look at, it could have been so much better. He should just be suplexing that train in. People would have pulled just for that. And people will pull for Sabin or Edgar because they love Final Fantasy VI. Looking at the Super Trust uh, Mastery Award, it is the Coin of Fate Sabin Edition here. Attack 55, a little bit more attack, enables training payoffs, boost HP by 30%, and attack by 60% when equipped with a fist. So in my opinion, 
Obviously, attack 55 right here, uh, being slept on here with some HP is amazing. If you're not going to be putting a fist on, it's going to be a little bit rough. However, we are moving into the true dual wield meta, where if they can put a fist on, you can kind of put their main weapon here and then throw a fist on and use this. Both of their super trust mastery rewards are absolutely bonkers. It's really tough to chase for them, though. So it's kind of more like hope it happens down the road kind of thing. Looking at the actual trust master reward, long training pays off. Restore HP every turn and boost attack by 60% when equipped with fists. So if you're looking for um, some kind of monk trust master reward, if you really want to be using a monk like Sabin, this is going to be good for you. You'll be able to go in and use that up. Then we already know about Setzer and his fixed dice and Celeste being on this banner. Nothing too crazy here to talk about. Uh, with those th uh, four star base and three star base units, we do have Figaro Castle coming, which will contain a UOC. Um, you guys got to get Walnuts, which is freaking fantastic. Uh, let's look at this Royal Crown Defense 28, Spirit 35, enables proof of royalty. Proof of royalty boosts attack, magic, and HP about 10%. It's it's actually a pretty solid thing, right? A solid headpiece. You get some defenses and spirit. Those would be on your, like your support units, um, and then you also get a little bit of HP, magic, and attack if you want. The HP is kind of more important when we're talking about those support units. Thunder Shield boosts uh, th lightning resist by fifty percent and enables Thundaga. Um, the lightning resist by fifty percent is going to be important when you really need to build that up on units. It's going to help you out a lot. I suggest definitely picking this up. Uh, in the key mog shop just because of this lightning resist we're going to need this resist it's already been happening i can't say it enough get anything that boosts resist this is 50 percent. if somebody can help hold a shield it's going to help you reach that lightning resist cap you may be looking to hit whatever level you are uh fraternal power boost hp by 10 percent attack and spirit by five percent this has been around since king mog has been around nothing too new here uh looking on down sand rays we can fight they're the bonus units and uh, as you guys can see um if you guys end up pulling any of the five-star bases, they're going to give you a bonus. But we also have the bonus for people out there that already have Setzers and Celeste to help you guys get that King Mog currency and get through this event, which I think is pretty nice for them to be there. Don't forget about grabbing up that special five-star uh, base ticket. When you guys get this from King Mog, you're going to be able to go in and summon, get a five-star randomly. But it's always cool to get that, and everybody looks forward to that uh, as well. And uh, last but not least on our planned events for this week, we do have the Magitek Ruins, which is going to be the, uh, like the trial boss for the for the raid going on right now and honest honestly you guys need to be doing this one the marlboro doll is a hat okay gives you defensive spirit 30 which are okay stats on a hat when it comes to defensive stats but most importantly again it is going to be a ribbon type effect that you could put on the headpiece this is huge for a lot of support units or any unit really out there plus it's a cute little marlboro doll um but again the the, the enemies the trials are going to start imperiling your resistances to stone to paralyze and you're going to need to buff and have this equipped. And so I would be picking up anything. And this is very unique as it's a hat. Definitely get, that, get in there and get that. Everything else you can kind of skip. Obviously, you know, you got a 5% trust Moogle. Some of the raid coins, which you guys probably already farmed a million. I didn't. I was at Disney, but I need to. And then uh, no limit burst. Two tickets. That's amazing. You guys can pick that up. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to take on this fight. Uh, but most importantly, just go in there and smack it down with your Xenos or your Esters or your Axtars and grab that Marlboro doll at least. Uh, going over to notices, we do have some more information on the Summon Coin Exchange, um, but not very much. And it's kind of a, I don't want to say it's super disappointing, but for most players out there who don't spin on the step ups, it is a little bit of a disappointment. Um, you guys can pick up these uh, Summon Coins from doing step ups is what it says. Uh, summon Coins are acquired by summoning on the FF6 Step Up Summon banner, and I'm assuming they're going to, like... If you don't use them during this time, they will go away. I don't think you can save them up, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so you're not going to be able to get them on like dailies, tickets, uh, you know, normal pools, 500 pools, 5k pools, which I know was kind of grasping for something. But hey, you know, we can always wish for better things in the game. Uh, it looks like you can exchange the items for five star select UOC tickets. Um, 50% trust Moogles. Okay. Uh, four star plus uh, guaranteed ticket and a five, per uh, five star 10% trust Moogle. Um, they are obtainable from the step-up banner and will no longer be usable past Friday 614. So yeah, there you go. You're not going to be able to keep a hold of them. It even says it in the fine print. Uh, so overall, not as exciting as we were hoping because this really just is, is single targeted at maybe a dolphin to well category. Obviously, if this gets thrown onto banners where people are saving up, that's more value for them. So it doesn't always have to be for dolphins and wells. There are free to play players out there, or small little minnows who save up and spend on step ups. And if the summon coins are there, that's just added bonus for their saved up lapis. However, it would have been nice to just throw somebody a bone, maybe give us like one per ticket used or something like that. I mean, you're only giving away 
just the normal stuff. There's nothing crazy in here. We're thinking there might be unit prisms. It doesn't look like this time. So these are just items you can normally get, even with the Trustmaster coin. So it would have been nice to just throw a little bone. If you spend like 50 tickets, you can get yourself maybe a four-star guaranteed ticket out of here. You know what I mean? Nothing too crazy, but still, it's added value for people already spending. Now, the Ability Awakening update is here. And uh, we have some pretty juicy ones. Sephiroth is going to be the most juicy, in my opinion. He's going to be able to take hold of his true dual, uh, true double hand, excuse me, ways and just start smashing down people. Uh, and he also gets triple cast on a cooldown ability, which is going to be quite amazing. Uh, if you go through here, uh, enable specific abilities to be used twice in one turn. That's going to be able to be there. Um, Activate one each turn regardless of equipment and conditions. That's going to be for you guys to be able to use all the time. So now Sephiroth can fully walk into using one katana and slashing up people. Now, do I think his damage is going to be on par with Axtar, uh, Esther, Zeno? No, he's going to come close, though. He's going to help the people out there who don't have those big damage dealing units, but have two Sephiroth, or maybe just want to use Sephiroth, get up there and do some better damage. And then right here, Tragic End, we can see enables a uh, three-fold technique for three turns of the caster, giving him triple cast, allowing him to do a lot of damage if you need to. And then we have uh, Leela here. She gets a lot of different uh, buffs up, uh, different changes um, to herself. She also has spirit uh, equipment up when armed with two-handed weapon, uh, which is added with secret approach. She is going to do um, more damage than she did even on her JP counterpart, it looks like. Now, I can't say that for sure, um, but the changes it looks like here, she will be. Will she be a top meta champion? I don't think so. Um, sadly, she's just not going to be able to compete with the higher end people, but that makes sense, right? Um, as they want you to be pulling with the higher uh, people. However, it doesn't mean that you can't be taking down uh, trial bosses that come out with double Leela. I think it's going to be hard to find one on your friend list, though, uh, unless you have two seven stars yourself, as she has kind of been someone who's been forgotten. I think Sephiroth... Um, will be a higher pick when it comes to finding people on your friend list because he chains with most of the chaining families. I'm not saying Leela doesn't. It's just a little bit weird I, in a way. Just, not everything changed correctly and uh, with everybody that's in the current meta, if that makes any sense. Atoning Dragoon Kane, honestly, didn't look over him too much. Um, I don't think anything's buffing him to become mega strong. Uh, and beforehand, it has always been this, in my opinion, a bad taste in our mouth and global when it comes to uh, Kane just because of the thing where it's like, He's totally going to chain correctly. Shit, he doesn't. You know what I mean? So, uh, there's that. But those are the ones you uh, should be looking out for. Obviously, there are a few more up here. Emperor Shara is still a great uh, support unit to have on your team. And then we have, uh, because of the whole imbuing and uh, chaining abilities, more of a support unit now. And then Pure uh, Summon Iridia, if you guys want to get your summon on, chain a little bit there, you guys can use her as well. Alexa, I miss you. I miss you, Alexa. She was really good there for a while with the uh, chaining. They talk about the login bonuses here, and one of the things I want to point out, and it's been happening for a while, we finally got rare summon tickets back in the login bonuses. It has been a, few, uh, a couple of events now, but we were getting EX tickets. Eh, rare summon tickets better up. Uh, and then we can see here that we do have 30% back, like I was saying, instead of the 20%, because it did drop to 20%, I do believe, on the past two banners, and they upped it to 30% here. I don't know what dictates that, because in my opinion, Sabin and Edgar are more hunted units than the last banner we had while I was at Disney. So, I don't know. Maybe they were just throwing a little test water out there to see what happens. Uh, again, don't forget the five-star summon guaranteed ticket. Lo moving on to this, uh, which I do like the way they did this issue report here, is they have an issue report, something about the languages not being displayed correctly, and then instead of issuing another issue report, they just updated this one at the top. This issue has been resolved. So, I think it's pretty cool. Like, if, if you have an issue here you really want to pay attention to, oh, something's wrong, blah, 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 blah. If the issue's been resolved... You know, just put a little asterisk next to it. Give us a little blip up here for important. And then we can see that being resolved instead of another post. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way. But I think it helps keep things in perspective. You can come in here and be like, ooh, what, what's been changed? Okay, it's been resolved. Oh, this is a problem. I didn't experience it, but it's cool to have it all right there, if that makes any sense. Uh, and then we have another important notice. In regards to the platform refund abuse mentioned in the previous news, the applic applicable account suspensions have been implemented. The users found uh, accountable, in most cases, a 30-day suspension, uh, while severe cases have been permanently suspended. We will continue to conduct regular checks for such offenses. So, essentially, the ban wave's been out. If you're banned right now, uh, the one thing I have noticed for people coming to me that have been banned, some of them claim, now again, we can't confirm, you're taking someone's word for it, we don't have the information, um, claim that 
perhaps they did never do this refund thing and maybe they were wrongfully banned. Again, send a ticket in, do the best you can. The one thing I did not like about this, well, I liked that it's only a 30 day suspension for some people. So it's kind of like a slap on the wrist. Don't do that. It would suck to lose your account. While some people maybe who were just abusing the crap out of it, refunding every banner, ha 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 ha, you know, they, they get permanently banned. Uh, either way, I wish nobody was getting banned for, uh, you know, this, it doesn't hurt the players, but I guess it hurts the company, so it makes sense. Um, however, when you got banned, it didn't tell you if you have a 30-day suspension or a permanent suspension. At least not that I've seen. So maybe the ones I've all seen have been permanent, but it would have been nice if they were like, you have been suspended, contact this, you know, they have this email that you guys can contact, uh, sending in your, you know, proof or questions you have, and then maybe have a countdown timer that tells you how many days left you're suspended. Uh, most games have that, so hopefully they, that's something they can implement to help people who have been suspended at least know when they're going to come back. Now, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, everybody tries to get the best edge they can. So, you know, 30 day suspension, come back, play the game again if you'd like. Um, you know, while getting a slap on the wrist, that seems fine to me. But overall, guys, this week in FFBs, you know... Pretty good for people who like Final Fantasy VI. Uh, we got some good items coming in, and a King Mog is always fun to grind. Uh, I do want to uh, say something. I tried my first hand at vlogging this past trip at Disney. Now, it didn't do the best job, but it did okay. Um, up here in the corner right here, you'll see a little eye. If you guys could click that, check out, or it's my last video I put, check out my Disney vlog. It is 55 minutes long, but I tried to cut it to be the best I could. We're going to have a couple more videos come out uh, of our trip with Rachel and I. If you guys could give it a watch, it'd mean a lot to me. Um, I've always wanted to do vlogging. Um, this is just like a side thing for me. I just want to see it. If you guys have any constructive criticism, I know my camera's a little rough with dark lighting, but it would mean the world to me if we could get that video up to 3K views. Just We're at 1,000 right now. If we get up to 3K, it would be astronomically amazing to me. I'd be so excited. This is just like a side project. And if you guys are interested in me vlogging, I could vlog other things like going, if I would ever go to E3, these FFBE events, I could do that and bring some other aspects to it if you like it. If you don't, hey, thanks for watching my FFBE videos, but it'd be awesome if I could get some support, get that, get my vlog videos up to 3K views. It's just a, a random number that helps my brain. That's it. And, and it shows that I'm doing something right, being a little successful. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below um, if you got banned. And if, uh, you know, how you're dealing with that. And then subscribe for future content. We'll catch you guys in the next video.